We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Billings, Montana, as we get to visit with Coach Chris Stutzreem, the head football coach for the Rocky Mountain Battling Bears. Coach, 2022, a 6-4 record. And uh, obviously, uh, you want to be a little bit higher up there, trying to fight for that conference title, get that playoff appearance. The season kind of drifted a little bit during the end. Can you tell us a little bit about your year? Uh, you know, number one, we've got we've got great coaches and great kids here. I love being around them. Um, you know, I've been some places where you just try to get through the year because maybe you know the team wasn't great, didn't gel together. Coaches were arguing things like that. Um, but it was it was you know it's not where we wanted to be. Uh, I felt like we started off hot. Um, you know, it really hurt when we lost our lost our quarterback, who was a, a big time leader, captain. Um, he kind of made everything go on offense and. Uh, but you know, I felt like we got better as a team. We played a lot of young guys, um, still, uh, continuing that, but we needed to, uh, we needed to play better down the stretch and play good against, you know, championship caliber teams. And, and we just didn't, um, comparative to the, to the 2021 season when we did. Well, coach, then I know there were a, a lot of battles through the spring and heading into camp right now, still positions where there are opportunities for people to win spots. Quarterback position, one of those, Trent Nobach, uh, who uh, found some time in the spring as well. And then among those, Luke Holcomb. But I know that there are players who are fighting for that spot. Yeah, we've we've got a battle going on, you know, not only at our quarterback position with Trent, Luke, uh, Graydon Buell, um, Gabe Smith, uh, JT Allen, uh, a couple guys that have been in our system, uh, and a couple new guys, and and they're they're continuing to battle every day. Um, Trent does have experience on the field. JT Allen has a little bit, uh, but the new guys have done a phenomenal job of coming in, um, being great people. Number one, they were all here this summer. Um, even our freshman Bronson Tillotson out of out of Florida, uh, who has ties uh, to uh, the Billings area, Montana area, and that's kind of why we were able to land him. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they're battling every day. And, and as I tell them, I say, we're going to keep stats on everything um, from throwing it to how many turnovers to how many checks were wrong, how many were right, uh, things in that nature. But it's been uh, it's been a good battle and they've supported each other and getting better together, which in in the long run will help our team. Some areas of the offense, you bring back players, some not so much. Running back position, you bring back your leader from last season in Zaire Wilcox. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a tremendous young man. Uh, he's really grown um, from his freshman year of where he was kind of that spot player. And last year had a, had a great year. He's a tough runner, uh, great person. Um, you know, his brother was on, our, was on my staff a couple years ago, was a graduate of Rocky. Um, and so that's how we got Zaire out of Florida as well. Um, but just a, a great player that I'm expecting a big year from. Uh, we also return uh, Ben Rooney and Cade Lambert, who had a lot of carries last year as well. We kind of move the running backs around a lot, get them out of the backfield, and we play, you know, three or four uh, heavily a game. Uh, but excited about that position. They're they're hard workers, and um, I think they'll they'll help us a lot in the run game. Whoever comes out of the quarterback battle, and, and you mentioned so many of those names, so I, I, what a blessing, I'm sure, to have that kind of depth even through a quarterback competition in camp. We'll have some solid receivers to throw to. Joseph Dwyer among those returning from last season who had some catches for you and some touchdowns. Yeah, Joseph Dwyer is a, a great leader. He's actually a high school teammate of Luke Holcomb, the transfer from Washington State. So that's how we had some familiarity with him. And, um, you know, to hear our players want to bring other players that they're friends with or know about into our program, um, you know, really, really resonates well with me because I think that they're enjoying it, that they want to bring other people along. Uh, but Joseph Dwyer, uh, De Niro Killian Jr., uh, guys that have been staples for us uh, outside the box um, at the receiver position. Uh, Jack Waddell is another name that he's a local kid that uh, is very shifty, can make things happen with the ball in his hands. Um, but we've seen some guys, some couple transfers come in. Uh, Nikio Thomas, uh, really excited for him, transfer from Lamar University out of Texas, um, who's a relative of, of Kaysan Barnett. So, <clears throat> excuse me, having those having those connections has really helped us out a lot. Um, and again, it just makes us feel good that we're doing the right things that people want to bring them in. But uh, really expecting a lot of a lot of great things from that group. Uh, they're very talented. Um, there's a there's a good depth there, and also at our tight end position. You know, we we lose first team All Conference or leading receiver last year, Andrew Simon. But I believe uh, Matt McGrain and, and Donovan Clinton uh, have done a great job of competing this 
uh, this fall as well. And, and they're great leaders for the young guys. Um, and so they'll both play heavily in our offense this year. Rocky Mountain seems to do its own marketing pretty well. I mean, with the, the contacts <laughs> that are bringing in other players. I mean, yeah. what, what a pipeline. I was thinking about the Florida connection there, but the pipeline really is the players themselves. And that's that has to be yeah. something that's, that's just great for you, Coach, for your staff and for the university. Yeah, I think it's I think it's awesome. Anytime a player comes to us, um, you know, I love that they bring in, hey, coach, this is a guy I went to school with in high school or at junior college or uh, a relative of mine. It just it makes you feel good as a coach. It makes you, you know, you're doing the right things. And and uh, but also those players know, hey, they better fit our system. They better, um, you know, do what we ask them to do. And, and if they will, they'll get taken care of really well. We're speaking with Chris Stutzream here on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here on the channel. We like talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, I mentioned there were a couple of areas in which you did have some new people that are going to have to come in. Offensive line lost three of your starters to uh, as, as seniors last season, so there are some opportunities there for players to step up. Yeah, you know, and we, we lost our left tackle, our left guard, uh, and our right guard last year um, to graduation and, and done playing and things like that. So, you know, that's always the biggest key, offensive and defensive line. you got to be able to win that line of scrimmage battle. So um, I'm very, very excited about what Coach Melendo, our offensive line coach, and our assistant line coach, Coach Smart, um, have done with this group of guys. Uh, they have really, really grown from even last spring. Uh, we had 95 guys here over the summer getting better and, and player-led workouts and things. So to see that group, especially in the, in the process and uh, how they've gotten better. And, and we'll be a little bit young, but I feel good about them. I feel strong about them. Um, and right now, you know, I'd say there's eight or nine guys that are out there competing and um, trying to earn that starting spot. Uh, you, you lose some strength from the defensive line as well to graduation. Talk a little bit about your D-line as we go to the other side of the ball. Well, losing Wes Moai, you know, the guy who anchored the D-line, um, you know, getting drafted, the first player ever NAI drafted into the XFL. So that was great. And he's going to be with the Seattle Sea Dragons. But uh, losing him was is tough. Uh, but I, I do feel good. Dylan Baradon, who's a two-time uh, captain for us, has, will be anchoring that D-line with Ethan Hurst. Uh, but Coach Washington and Coach Wilson, our two D-line coaches, have done a tremendous job in recruiting getting guys that can uh, can get after the, the quarterback, um, put pressure on the on the offensive line. Um, but again, that's another position where, you know, it's not, hey, these are the four guys we have. It's still a big battle and and guys are working extremely hard. Coach, you had, you had players beyond the defensive line. You go in, into to the secondary and the linebacker core, and there were a number of players that were able to get to where the ball was. Uh, watching those quarterbacks down the field get some interceptions. You mentioned Case on Barnett, so let's talk about him really quickly. Led the team with five interceptions last season. He's among those strong players that are back, including getting Ty Reynolds back, uh, one of the strong players from the year before who was out last season due to an injury. Yeah, I, you know, I think it was three games in a row last year where our defense had an interception or fumble recovery for a touchdown. Um, you know, I, I think the the ones we feel probably the best about and, and most comfortable with are our linebacker position and our DBs, Prince Johnson, Cade Reynolds, which is actually Ty's brother, a transfer from South Dakota State. Um, those two will kind of anchor the inside, but we've got Mason Browning, Jaden Fletcher uh, as well. And then um, one guy that I would call him the Swiss Army Knife, uh, Wyatt Bresvin. Um, he's our starting kicker, um, does our kickoffs, and then also plays kind of that outside backer position. But uh, you know, we feel really good about Kaysan. He's really grown into a leadership role, uh, which is phenomenal to see. Um, you know, he's grown up a lot as a, from a freshman to, to where he is now as a junior. Uh, but he's he's a tremendous young man, um, plays extremely well. You know, you just feel good about putting him on an island. Uh, but also Braille Lipford and Jonathan Goins and different guys that have just been in our system for a little bit and really bought in. Um, and then our, our safeties. Uh, Jack Klein and and uh, Jack or John Waddell, which is also Jack Waddell's brother, uh, the receiver. So having guys back there that can really make it tough on receivers, on quarterbacks, and they've just played a lot of games together. Um, Ty Reynolds, unfortunately, last spring got hurt um, towards ACL. And he was, again, a guy that could have graduated and said, you know what, coach, I'm ready to move on. But was fully bought in last year um, as a leader, as a, as a guy in the secondary uh, and just excited to see him back full strength and, and ready to go 
um, done a, done a tremendous job. So that back end, uh, they'll, they'll be just fine. Um, great players. They still, you know, they're still going to go up against a lot of good players at receiver and tight ends and things like that. Uh, but they've, they've done a great job and, and, uh, just excited to see them take that next step. Coach, you mentioned your kicker and, uh, the Swiss army knife. I love that, uh, analogy as there are a number of players that on your team, obviously that, that are multifaceted go back to Barnett to your punt returner from last season. Yes. He's got all conference honors, both on what he did on defense and on special teams. Yeah. He stepped into that role as a punt returner. Um, you know, we'd probably put him back there as a little bit of a kick returner too. Uh, again, he just he's he's so dynamic with the ball in his hands, and sometimes you don't see that as a as a defensive back, right? Um, but just did a did a great job, and uh, Coach Bloom with the scheme and, and trying to get after put pressure on the kickers, but also um, you know with the ball in his hands, he, he just makes things happen. And uh, you know, if you can if you can get 10, 12 yards, that's a great punt return. But he was getting big returns. Um, and we've got some other weapons, too, uh, that'll be kick returners. And, um, you know, if, if Kason, if it's a long drive or something like that, we feel very comfortable with putting somebody else back there as well. Uh, but anytime Kason Barnett's on the field, we're, we're excited about it. Coach, the season gets underway very quickly, not too long from now, just more than two weeks away, actually, is where we are right now in the month of August. Week zero, August 26th rolls around. You're at home, so the folks there in Billings get to see you take on a non-conference opponent in Dickinson State. And then you get MSU Northern on the road to have to go to Haver for that one, one of two times to get to see the lights this year. However, with the, the new look to the frontier, uh, it's not a, you know, a double up schedule all the way through. That's your only uh, home and away with an opponent this season. Get a bye week and then the conference schedule starts. The first one with Northern, not a conference game officially, but you know, it's a conference opponent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but then after the bye week, September 16th, back at home and you take on Carroll. Take us through your schedule, at least the opening. Well, right now, um, you know, it's it's sometimes when you're going through fall camp, you you gotta find that that great balance of focusing on yourself, getting better, competing against whether it's offense, defense same positions, whatever it is for a while. Um, you know, and we haven't really talked much about Dickinson. Uh, they're a great, they're a great team. They're coached very well. I mean, they, I think they've won nine conference championships in a row um, out of the North star. Uh, they're, they're always a playoff team. Um, they're coached uh, by a legend um, and Pete Stanton. So, which ironically his two brothers are the high school head coaches at Billings West here and then Billings central. So um, there's that family tie, but It'll be fun. That's always a, a great regional battle. They do a lot of recruiting out here in Montana. Um, we go head to head with them in recruiting a lot out of the state of Montana. Um, but it's, you know, a four hour trip that uh, it'll it'll be an electric atmosphere. You know, we expect around six, seven thousand people at that game. Uh, it's a night game. But right now we're really focused on ourselves. Uh, we've got to continue to get better day in and day out. We'll have practice eight today. Uh, our kids start school on Monday. Um, we've got a scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, and so we've just got to continue to get better. But then we head up to, to Haver and, um, and, you know, they're, they're in their second year uh, with a coach who has a lot of wins throughout college football. Um, and so they're, they're going to be a, a, a way better football team. I know they are. Um, and it is, like you said, it's, it's great that the conference is now going to, um, you know, we had three double up, double ups with teams and that's hard. It's hard to beat teams twice. Um, and so to have, have it narrowed down, not just for whoever, but for the whole conference, I think it'll really excel uh, teams into the playoffs because I've been in three, um, three conferences in the NAI and I'll put the frontier up there uh, with anybody, you know, every week is a battle. There's not the, the off week or, Hey, we feel really good about this. Um, and so I think it'll really help our conference out moving forward, especially with the, the expansion of the playoffs. Um, and then Carroll college, you know, that's the, that's a big rivalry for us. Um, they got after us last year. They they shut us down on offense um, and then uh, felt good about our defense last year and uh, in the game against them especially. But, um, you know, that that's one that you always circle, but uh, on the on the calendar, no matter what it is. Um, and so we're excited uh, just to get going here and continue again to work and and um, hopefully get better. You know, that's always the tough part with with football, especially is. You never know how good you are, right? You're only playing against yourself. So, um, but I'm excited about our guys. We've got very coachable kids. I think this is the first year with our freshmen coming in that I felt like, man, these guys are really coachable. They're eager uh, to get out there and learn. And, and we do some different team building things in the in the fall. 
um, especially now in August and just seeing the guys interact with each other. You know, we've got guys from overseas. We've got guys from Florida to Washington, from California to the East Coast. And so seeing that group of guys uh, come together, I think, is is uh, is really great. Um, and we've just got to continue to build on that. Well, it, it sounds like that is what you're doing, Coach. And and once players get there, they're not afraid to tell someone else to come up because there's something obviously good going on in Billings. Coach yeah. Chris Dutzream from Rocky Mountain. Coach, thank you for taking time with us today. We'll follow the Battling Bears this season, and uh, we look forward to seeing how you all do. Thanks for taking time with us here on the Summit. Thanks, Joey. Really appreciate it.